Hi, this is Miss Karen with the readings for the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And we are in Ordinary Time right now, which just means that the Sundays are numbered. Ordinary is another word for ordinal. And the liturgical color during Ordinary Time is green, which is kind of perfect for uh, summer because things are growing. Um, we have a chance to kind of assess in our hearts and in our faith life what we're doing well at, what maybe we need to work a little bit harder at, and what maybe isn't working and needs to be pruned away. And it's a reminder, like plants, like our yards, we are a work in progress too. We are constantly growing and changing. And that's part of being human, and that's part of being a Christian. If we are not growing and changing, then we are dead. So when you're hearing the readings, listen to what God is saying to you. Try to, try to just absorb it and, and see what the message is for you, because every time you hear it, it's going to be something different. And that's really the beauty of the scripture. So in the first reading, it's from the book of the prophet Amos in the Old Testament. And the first reading isn't going to make a whole lot of sense if you don't put it in the context of what was happening at the time. So the prophet Amos, the prophet Amos lived about 750 years before Jesus. And he lived in the southern part of the promised land. He lived in Judah. And he it says that he was a shepherd and someone that took care of trees. And he was called by God to go to the northern kingdom to prophesy. And it doesn't really sound like Amos was thrilled about that. It was going to be a really hard job. So there used to be one kingdom when uh, God's people got to the promised land. And it was great. It was awesome. And then after King Solomon died, his son Rehoboam was in charge. And the he Rehoboam sucked. He 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 just sucked. And so he was like, you guys are whiners. I'm doing my thing. I'm taxing you. I'm doing whatever I want with you. And you're going to do what I say because I'm the king and I don't care if it's good for you or not. And people in the 10 tribes, all the tribes except for Benjamin and Judah were like, mm, yeah, see ya. We're done with this. So they left and they made their own country. Um, but Jerusalem, where they went, where the center of their worship was, was in Judah, was in the south. So all these tribes that kind of seceded in the north didn't have a place to worship. And they're like, Meh, no problem, no problem. So their king Jeroboam and all the kings after them, who were also all terrible, came up with new places to worship, new priests new rules, new gods, and they got involved worshiping God in a way that God didn't want to be worshiped, and they got involved in worshiping other gods too, even going so far as to like child sacrifice, so it was bad, and Amos was sent to bring them back, and as you're listening to the readings, how does it go for Amos, and how would you feel if you were in the position that Amos is in, because every single day, I bet you you're putting some some in some way in that position. So the second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. And it's important to put this reading in context too. And I know we talk all the time about St. Paul, but we've got to talk about who he is and who he was writing to. So St. Paul was Saul of Tarsus, who was a an extremely observant Jew, and he was persecuting people following Jesus because he thought these people were were betraying Judaism. And then Saint, uh, I'm sorry, Saul of Tarsus at this point had a run in with the risen Christ on the road to Damascus when he was ready to get himself some Christians, and ended up his heart ended up changing. He accepted Jesus and became a follower of Jesus, and he went all over everywhere teaching people about Jesus. So he was writing to people in Ephesus, which is where Turkey is now. And in Ephesus, people were trying to figure out how to be Christians. There were Gentiles and Jews and all kinds of people living there. And all these people had Jesus in their heart and they were just trying to figure out how to be a Christian and what the best way was to worship because this was all new. And 
like so many of his other works, Paul wrote this letter from jail because loving Jesus wouldn't be legal for like another 150 years. So Paul did a lot of his writing from jail. And as you're listening, Paul isn't just talking to the church in Ephesus. He's talking to us too. So who is the head of our church? What is the purpose of our church? Who is included? And how does the Holy Spirit kind of like a, a pregame show for what's in store for us in heaven? So the gospel is from Mark and Mark is my favorite. And Mark doesn't waste any time. He gets right down to business and Mark is all about action. And Mark was writing probably he was one of the, the, it was one of the first gospels written, and we think that he was writing for people that weren't Jewish and wouldn't be familiar with uh, traditions that Jews followed. So Mark was trying to spread the word about Jesus and to also get people ready for persecution and to face really hard times. Because when Mark was writing in like 70 AD, the world was a hot mess. So Jerusalem had just been retaken over after an uprising by the Romans who, as you recall, with the they were they were not people that you really wanted to get, you know, taken over by. And they had destroyed Jerusalem and destroyed the temple and things were really bad. And Christians, it was about to go down persecution wise. Um, and as you're listening to the gospel, Jesus sends out his apostles and he sends them out two by two. And notice what he sends them out with. And, and that always strikes me because apparently I, if you have ever seen the bag that I bring to Edge, I do not subscribe to the apostolic way of packing because this is what goes with me everywhere. Um, because you only have what you bring with you, right? Right. Jesus was like, mm, wrong. I would so flunk packing if I was an apostle. And he's like, you guys have to depend on each other and God will give you everything else that you need. And Jesus does that for us too. And Jesus kind of also sets them up too and say, says, you guys are going to be rejected. And, and he says, when you're rejected, shake the dirt off your feet, pull up your huggy and move on. And that's exactly, Jesus isn't just talking to his apostles. He's talking to us too. We are going to have to do this. And guess what? Uh, the, the same job that the apostles have, that's our job too. And God will give us everything that we need to do it. Seriously, you don't think he will? I promise you, he will. So your job for this week is to figure out what is holding you back from serving God. Is it your phone, your friends, your attitude, sins? We all have something that's holding us back. Spend some time in prayer and try to figure that out. And then... Get your hindquarters to confession. I would love to hear that there was a line out the door to confession with all the middle schoolers from Edge. So that's your assignment for this week. Have a wonderful week.